Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Step into your divine authority and reign with power. In Manifesting Kingdom Authority, Apostle Joshua Selman reveals how to unlock your spiritual dominion. Discover the keys to harnessing God's authority through scripture and revelation. Learn how to stand strong and unyielding in the face of adversity. Embrace your role as a kingdom ambassador and transform your world, empowering you to manifest the authority of God's kingdom. Your voices and let's give him praise. The author, the finisher of our faith, the fountain of wisdom, the one who was, who is, who is to come. Someone bless him. Thank you, Jesus, for your power. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you because this is Bethel, the house of bread. Thank him in advance for the transformation that will happen in your life tonight. The Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Someone is saying thank you. A grateful heart is saying thank you. Now ask him for a visitation tonight. Ask him for a mighty encounter. Shabarados Cabranch. Mighty encounter tonight for everyone that asketh, receiveth. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. There are many things that happen to us when we gather like this. Among the many things that happen is a revelation of his presence in a higher dimension. We see him as he is. We know him the more. And the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. He says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then it says, we all. So it's an experience for all. We all, not we some, we all. The weak, the strong, the hungry, the filled, we all. Beholding us in a mirror, it says we are changed. We are changed into that same image from glory to glory. We behold the glory of God. We behold the glory of God. We behold the glory of God. We behold. We behold. We behold the glory of God. We behold the glory of God. We behold the glory of God. assignment as always is to be attentive listen Satan does not stop walking just because you are in the presence of God because he knows the presence of God alone does not prohibit him even in the presence of God your will has a role to play you can choose to allow Satan buffet you in the presence of God Satan never ran away from Jesus not even with fasting Satan is not afraid of the word of God. 
Satan is not afraid of the presence of God. He's afraid of what the faith of the believer does with the word of God. He's afraid of what the faith of the believer does connecting to the presence of God. The presence of God on his own and the word of God on his own will remain impotent because God will not force his will and purposes on any believer. So just that you, because you are in the presence of God, it does not guarantee that you walk away free, that you walk away healed, that you walk away delivered. You must connect by faith. Are we together? Can you pray that one prayer? I release my faith tonight. Go ahead and pray. I release my faith for transformation. I release my faith for encounters. I release my faith to receive. I release my faith to become. Someone pray. I release my faith to prosper. I release my faith to access light. Light that produces. Not a semblance of it. Light indeed. In Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray the Bible says that was the true light that lighted every man there are false lights I have taught you here they carry a semblance of liberty but cannot bring you liberty indeed but that was the true light that lighted every man father help us tonight we have come to access wisdom we have come to be empowered by your spirit Spirit of the living God, we declare that you have unrestrained access. Access in this place, access to our minds, that you will change us, mold us, and help us become. In Jesus' name we pray. Give Jesus a big hand clap and please, you may be seated. I welcome everyone. Thank you so much for your presence. Always an honor to have us around, uh, particularly for uh, those who have traveled from far and near, we thank you and we appreciate God for your presence. For the many who are following online, thank you very much. Your lives will never be the same in the name of Jesus. We're really honored to have in our midst tonight, um, Pastor Godwin and his dear wife, Pastor Sharon, his treasure house. Let's give them a big God bless you, Koinonia. Give them a big Koinonia welcome. Surprise, surprise. God bless you, sir. And God bless you, ma in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I know that there are quite a number of people who have traveled. I spotted um, Pastor Ike. God bless you. Good to see you. And um, all who have traveled. If you're a man of God here, a woman of God particularly, we thank you and we honor you for your presence. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, my heart is indicting a good matter. He say, yea, I speak of excellent things. My tongue, by his grace, is the pen of a ready writer. Hallelujah. I've shared a few things in this house that I want to do a quick recap on tonight. Number one, I've said it in this house that the ignorant believer is also a defeated believer what is common between the ignorant believer and the defeated believer is that these plagues come upon a believer not an unbeliever but the fact that the believer is ignorant hallelujah because salvation in christ is a gift it's not a product of transformation you receive by faith so that you are a believer does not mean that you have attained onto the level that helps you to manifest the God life in reality, in experience. The ignorant believer remains a defeated believer. And I taught us here that the blessings that are contained in this life that we have received in Christ is manifested in experience through knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. That if you fail to access knowledge, if you fail to access understanding, if you fail to access wisdom, you will be alienated from the life of God. Having their understanding darkened, it says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. Hallelujah. 
living in victory demands that you understand the dynamics of wisdom the dynamics of faith and the dynamics of power let me take it again living in the experience of victory in this kingdom demands that you understand the dynamics of wisdom the ministry of the word the dynamics of faith and the dynamics of power if any one of these dimensions is short in your christian experience you will never rise to your god-given potential the bankruptcy of wisdom will cost you more than you can imagine the bankruptcy of faith will cost you more than you can imagine the bankruptcy of power will cost you more than you can imagine you're not given the liberty to choose any of them you want they are all vital components to your excelling vital components to your walking in victory do not choose wisdom at the expense of faith do not choose faith at the expense of power do not choose power at the expense of the first two you need to contend for wisdom then contend for faith then contend for power are we learning many believers seem to come around one of these three dimensions and it's been responsible for the lopsidedness in our christian experience so there are believers who have a semblance of wisdom vast understanding of scripture with no justification of that word as far as their result is concerned the missing ingredient many times is faith the faith to connect to that wisdom and there are those who understand the dynamics of faith but they do not know that in all your manifesting faith if you are bankrupt of his power it is his divine power that gives us all things that pertains unto life and godliness the assignment of faith is what a connecting wire does when you buy a fridge that fridge has to be connected to a socket that wire that connects the fridge and the socket is faith but the electricity that comes from the power holding component of the power holding company is what actually powers the fridge so it is possible that the wire can be fine it's just that there's no light as we call it in africa and you will still not have the fridge on these are the working dynamics of the kingdom so every time we're gathered like this you expect the holy spirit to revolve around these three areas growing you in wisdom growing you in faith and growing you in power say after me wisdom say faith say power one last time say wisdom say faith say power the intent behind the teaching ministry in this house is to keep revolving around these three areas until you are holistically built so in the communication you will hear the wisdom of god then there will be a point of application where you will know how to release your faith connecting to the word and then we trust the supply of the spirit while we speak to provide the power component are we together this is why i am sure that tonight as always that you must return with a testimony amen. after tonight's service you believe that shout a believer's amen, amen. one more thought I was thinking about my teaching tonight and I had to digress in my thoughts to consider something I want to read out for you right now. I wrote here that mentality plays a very large role in the quality of your Christian experience. Mentality plays a very large role in the quality of your Christian experience. There are people today who are not victims of laziness, not at all. They are not victims of falsehood. They are not victims of insincerity, yet they continue to live defeated Christian lives simply because of faulty belief systems. That mentality plays a vital role in the quality of your Christian experience. Mentality not church attendance mentality not just recitation of scripture your mentality
plays a vital role to the quality of your Christian experience. And let me repeat what I just said, that there are many people today who are not victims of laziness. As far as diligence is concerned, they are diligent enough to have seen the word produce. They are not false. Their pursuit is with all sincerity and purity of heart. And yet they continue to live defeated lives. And the reason is because something is wrong with their beliefs. I'm praying for you that as the word of God comes tonight, may it erode every faulty belief, every mentality that has empowered Satan and demons to keep you bound, keep you limited. In the name of Jesus, let it give way at the instance of the word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Are you ready? Fasten your seat belts and walk with me as we consider a very important topic tonight. I believe that this is very vital to our growth and our excelling in the kingdom. As always, I'm committed to bringing you truths that build, truths that establish us in righteousness. My intent is for us to become manifestations of the glory of God in experience. Hallelujah. Manifesting kingdom authority. Matthew chapter 8. We're beginning our reading from verse 5. Manifesting kingdom authority. I want to teach you the dynamics of walking in power and authority. You will be greatly blessed tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. For those of us who have been frustrated in our Christian experience because it seems that the power and the authority component has been missing. We have the language, we have the education, the Christian education, but the spiritual wherewithal to defend the things that we say about God has not been captured in our lives. I'm praying tonight for you in the name of Jesus that that missing link, that God will connect the dots for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 8, please. Manifesting kingdom authority. Want to take a study tonight from the life of Jesus and the centurion. Verse 5. And when Jesus entered into Capernaum, the Bible says, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, uh -huh, next verse, saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Next verse. And Jesus said unto him, I will come in honor to your request. You are a centurion. That will be the equivalent of a captain in the army. I will come and heal him. Verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. Take note of that statement. But speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Verse 9. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Hallelujah. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Reading to 13. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. 12. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Final verse. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. Go thy way. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. The Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Many believers are not able to walk in spiritual power or manifest kingdom authority in spite of the fact that the Bible is very clear as to the fact that among the many resources that were given to the believer to help us excel is the opportunity to walk in the authority and the power of the kingdom. Maybe I should start this way. This kingdom is a kingdom of power. Are we together now? The kingdom that we are part of and the kingdom we have been given is a kingdom that is in all way powerful. When Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray, 
one of the additions even though there are arguments there whether or not it was in the original manuscript you would find it in many renditions for thine is the kingdom thine is the power thine is the glory forever and ever so this is not just a kingdom of wisdom this is a kingdom of power when jesus walked upon the earth he did not just demonstrate the wisdom of god he demonstrated power he demonstrated authority over elemental forces authority over the vicissitudes of life the things that plagued the men that he met and he miraculously turned people's situations around in fact it was on account of the display of his power that many people were drawn to him for instance his experience with the madman in gadara the bible tells us that that man was so impacted by the power of jesus to deliver and restore him to his right mind two miracles happened there one was the miracle of deliverance the demons were casted out number two the transformation that happened to the man the bible says when they came they found the man seated and with his right mind and he went and brought together a decapolis the ministry of power has helped many through the centuries to believe it is part of the tools that have been given by god to the saints through christ to be able to help men to bring power to our witness in acts chapter 4 and verse 33 the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus christ and he says great grace was upon them all great grace was upon them all great grace was upon them all are we together in acts chapter 10 and verse 38 it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power was not just the holy ghost and with power and he went about endued with that power and he was doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him so this is a kingdom of power and it is in the destiny of every believer please listen carefully it is in the destiny of every believer regardless the nature of your kingdom assignment the ministry of power walking in power and authority is not privy to a few apostles or prophets or teachers or pastors are we together it's not just for those who are called into the fivefold ministry as we know it is the heritage of the saints to walk in and to manifest true kingdom power let me repeat that again for your hearing and learning it is the heritage of the saints to walk in and manifest true kingdom power true kingdom authority there is a dimension of the life of god you cannot communicate to your world bankrupt off and outside of true spiritual power and true spiritual authority like you will be learning many possibilities in this kingdom in fact all possibilities in this kingdom are power dependent power dependent healing the sick power dependent casting out devils power dependent recreating possibilities over the lives of people power dependent my god turning circumstances around power dependent making advancement in life power dependent it is by you that i can run through a troop it is by my god that i can leap over a wall are we together advancing forcefully in spite of the arsenals of darkness it is god that teaches my fingers my hands to war my fingers to fight that means if you do not understand the dynamics of power and the dynamics of authority you will peg your life and limit yourself spiritually now for the average believer in our world the moment we talk of power the only thing that personifies power is falling down so the average believer's understanding of power is the ability to whether through speaking or through words once another believer can fall under the anointing we sign that register and we believe that we are powerful 
power is beyond falling down it is beyond shouting under the anointing are we together now it is my prayer and intent after tonight's teaching that you will walk in power that is recognized both in the spirit and in the physical realm Amen. in the name of jesus christ Amen. what was missing in the experience of the sons of skiva and the one who was plagued with demons was power not knowledge they said in the name of jesus whom paul preaches that that communication was correct but the power components to back them was not there and the demon said jesus i know words with power paul i know words with power but who are you words alone and the demons descended on them it is a risk to sojourn the earth proposing many things even in the presence of demon spirits in the presence of men now believers make all kinds of arrogant statements i can hold a charm and nothing happens to me you are right if there is power but if power is missing and you make certain ambitious statements, you may spend the rest of your short-lived life paying the price. Are we together? The ministry of power is not for Pentecostals. No. The ministry of power is not for charismatic people. It is a vital component. It is a principal survival strategy among the many things that was the green light for the church to be birthed to be born and for the ministry of witness to begin was the arrival of power before jesus died he had already taught them they were not bankrupt of mentorship but he said tarry what you need is not more information tarry if you carry this information alone you will be disappointed tarry until ye be endued with power from on high the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they says they were gathered together in one accord in one place. Suddenly, the ministry of power, my God. It says there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, fulfilling Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But ye shall receive power. Someone say power. power. The devil has not heard you. Say power. power you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and the power shall make you witnesses witnesses it takes more than education and enlightenment to be witnesses you shall receive power tl osborne had knowledge but he lacked power he went to India and was viciously disappointed. He returned back, not for more education, but stayed with God until power came. I watched a few of their videos preparing for this meeting and it challenged me so much. I was listening to Maurice Cyril of Blessed Memory and this man, I mean, he was sharing how the, his exploits as he sojourned from city to city, showing the ministry of power. We have downplayed power to our detriment is the reason why the gospel is seemingly powerless. We say a lot of things that are right. Our problem is not error. Our problem is there is no backing to what we are saying there is no wholeness to the gospel we say God can do things that are never done in our lives the reason why we patronize products is because there is an element of performance when the marketers tell you that the gadget will work this way when you buy it it works and they never have to tell you to tell another person about it i've told you the reason why evangelism is difficult is because we are largely missing the power component and the truth is that because our ignorance is laced with a lot of pride, it is difficult to even settle down and start a constructive journey towards accessing genuine power. It's difficult for the average believer to admit that we are far short of God's expectation, his definition of power. Read your Bible and see what men did in the presence of genuine power. Genuine power. Hallelujah. And so if we must manifest the authority that comes with this kingdom, it is important for us to know and appreciate, number one, that this is a kingdom of power. This is not just a kingdom of light. This is not just a kingdom of knowledge and wisdom, but it's a kingdom of power 
and authority the first thing God gave man Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28 the Bible says God gave man dominion dominion 26 to 28 he says have dominion have dominion don't speak dominion he did not just say understand dominion have dominion have dominion have dominion are we learning so this is a kingdom of power we have been given power we have been given authority in this kingdom Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 Jesus was speaking we'll make reference to that scripture a little later and we'll read the amplified version but for now let's make do with KJV it says behold I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you Psalm 8 4 to 6 Psalm 8 4 to 6 it says what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him verse 5 for thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim and has crowned him with glory and honor verse 6 it says thou made him to have dominion say dominion please shout it like you believe say dominion <laughs> dominion over the works of thy hands please keep that scripture there it says thou has put all things under his feet if you travel with me from this to Hebrews chapter 2 reading 5 to 8 same scripture but just to add flesh to it it says for unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak verse 6 it says for in a certain place making reference to Psalm 8 he testified saying keep the scripture please what is man that thou art mindful of him not the son of man that thou visitest him verse 7 thou hast made him a little lower than the angels thou hast crowned him with glory and honor he said you did set him over the works of your hands I like verse 8 it says that thou hast put all things under his feet for in for in that he put all things under his feet he left nothing he left nothing that was not under his feet but the tragedy is now in experience we do not yet see all things under his feet so whether you walk in the reality of kingdom authority or not does not change this verdict that all things in God's mind man is the zenith of his creation an adumbration of man's authority is seen in the story of Joseph at his point of exaltation. Pharaoh beat his chest and said, I am Pharaoh. And it is only in the throne that you will be higher than me. But in matters of governance and operation over Egypt, everything will revolve at thy word, dominion. Joseph was not the most powerful. He was not even the healthiest. We are talking of a slave who just came out hours ago from the prison. But the moment it was conferred upon him, Egypt was at the mercy of the power of, of Joseph. He could do and undo with anyone, including Potiphar who sent him to Egypt, sent him to prison. Let me tell you believers, if we want to see the harvest like never before, if we want to rise to become manifestations of the light and the glory of God, it is important for us to not only embrace but understand the dynamics of spiritual power. Now let me say this, there are a group of believers who have downplayed and trivialize the necessity for power and authority in the excelling of the believer and in the advancement of the kingdom that is a big mistake and then there are those who are unnecessarily obsessed with the idea of power without understanding the dynamics of working in the experience of it so we have believers on one hand who out of frustration most likely for secretly trying various formulas to not they have concluded that power is unnecessary and usually they lean along the angle of wisdom then there are those who are obsessed if you talk and you have not mentioned power they won't listen to you and yet in all of that communication the testament of working in authority is not captured in their Christian experience It is not enough that we understand that this is a kingdom of power and authority. 
it is not enough for us to know that it's our heritage in Christ we must be able to understand the dynamics and I want to do a little work on your mind right now and please cooperate with me and the Holy Spirit as we journey with you to redefine a few things I want to start tonight by doing a few redefinitions and I've done this before but I need it to connect to the other things that I'll be telling you let's define a few things what is power please write what is power it is important for you to understand what power is when we talk about power in the kingdom what exactly is power power is the capacity to influence outcomes please write it down the capacity to influence outcomes is called power we say that you will have power to the degree to which you have the wherewithal to influence outcomes if you lack the wherewithal to influence outcomes all kinds of outcomes spiritual outcomes economic outcomes sociological outcomes every time you see a man in the spirit or even in the secular sustaining wherewithal to influence outcomes that man is a powerful man so power is the capacity to influence outcomes can I give you another definition I define power furthermore as the force that compels compliance the force that compels compliance I like this because the fallen system is a world of disobedience all unclean spirits are disobedient spirits in fact the signature operation of unclean spirits are disobedience is, uh, is disobedience are we together now yes disobedience is the signature of all unclean spirits and so every time God speaks or every time you speak in the name of the Lord do not expect compliance until they are brought by force Satan will not leave your family just because the Word of God says he should Satan will not leave your finances leave your life leave your destiny it takes more than a good heart a well-intentioned personality to be free the Bible says say unto God how terrible art thou in thy works it says it is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies shall submit themselves to you the force that compels compliance the force that compels compliance there are many things that God said should not happen to your life Satan heard it unclean spirits heard it and they still stubbornly hold on to whatever keeps you a victim if you do not know how to bail yourself out by the application of genuine spiritual power you may remain a victim forever it takes power to grow it takes power to retain anything you have been given retainership is not a product of wisdom acquisition is a product of wisdom but retainership is a product of power are we together now power is the capacity to influence outcomes it is the force that compels compliance let me tell you the truth this world and the gates that have been closed around the systems of this world are not about to be open for you except and unless you come with power except and unless you come with power for instance ministry will never work until power is part of the equation your home your family will never work until power is part of the equation longevity in health and joy will never work promotion will never work advancement will never work are we together now nothing works in this kingdom until power keeps it in place look at me think of what happens in your house and think of what happens to your produce in the fridge when there's no light as we call it imagine that there's no light and you don't have any way of outsourcing power you know how inconveniencing it is to stay two three days no electricity most likely precious things that you've spent money buying putting in the fridge 
all the deep freezer will begin to rot. Is that so? Look the amount of wastage that happens in a house when you have 72 hours without power. So think of what happens to a believer from January till June. No power. I can tell you most likely the things you have received would have left you or would have lost their value. Power retains. There are things that can stay in the fridge for up to one month because there's constant electricity. Hmm. When ministry remains, it took power to keep it. If your family is still gathered together, it takes power to keep it. Are we together? Even your name, the reputation God has given you, it takes power. 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 Many of us have lost our bishopric because we ignored the ministry of power and we allow things to slip over our hands. Satan switched off the switch in your house and destiny and you allowed it. Things began to decay. The things that should carry value and glory were missing because there's, there's no power and there's no authority. I don't know one person who demons left in peace without engaging power. I don't know one person who's... Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. Dot in your precious name. Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.